بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيدنا محمد خاتم النبيين وإمام المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم افتح علينا فتوح العارفين ووفقنا توفيق الصالحين وانفعنا اللهم بالقرآن والذكر الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما يقربنا منك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت يا حي يا قيوم تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا سهلا اللهم أعذنا من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا وأصلح لنا شأننا كله لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد The title of this course is Love and Marriage I did not suggest the title but I was happy for the word order love and marriage because people love and marry in our modern times which is wrong they should marry then learn to love each other this is the start inshallah it would be shocking to tell you brothers and sisters that marriage in Islam is not based on love to be black and white from the beginning. Marriage is based on mutual understanding or harmony, which I'm going to explain giving two examples in this introduction. One from a verse of Al-Quran Al-Kareem, another is from a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam. To support this notion that love is not required in the preparation for marriage. We read in Surah Ar-Rum, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً إن في ذلك لآيات لقوم يتفكرون. This is one of six verses in which Allah Subhanahu wa Taala enumerates to us some great signs, proofs, miraculous happenings to prove the day of judgment and resurrection. The verses are connected to each other. Usually this verse is quoted for marriage in wedding parties when performing marriage contracts between couples. However, I have reflected upon these verses all together and have found in the word order, in the verse order, in uh, the verses before and the verses after a lot of uh, discoveries which I believe would help you if you go to the books of Tafsir Al-Quran Al-Kareem to see why Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said in these verses وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ such as وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ خَلْقُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ مَنَامُكُمْ بِاللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ So this is one of these great signs وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا And amongst his signs is that he created for you from within yourselves mates, azwaja, لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا So that you find tranquility in them. وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً And put amongst you, continuing, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ Amongst his sign is that he and he. And put amongst you mawadda and rahma. 
commonly translated as uh, love and mercy, which is wrong. Because the word mawadda is not mahabba. Mahabba is love, hub. Hub, mahabba, translated as love very easily. Mawadda is a different word. And this is a proof that a translation of the meanings of Al-Quran al kareem or rendering them in other languages is impossible. We can get some of the meanings, not all the meanings, let alone losing the matchlessness of Al-Quran al kareem which is uh, very specific, particular to its Arabic, not any other translation. Mahabba is a Quranic term. So there is no problem with the word Mahabba. Why it's not mentioned here? It rhymes the same. The same number of letters. Mahabba Mawadda. The same paradigm in morphology. There's nothing wrong with it. Quran is miraculous, matchless. Why it didn't come? In this specific verse, وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَحَبَّةً وَرَحْمَةً As in another verse, وَأَلْقَيْتُ عَلَيْكَ مَحَبَّةً مِّنِّي وَلِتُصْنَعَ عَلَىٰ عَيْنِي In the story of Musa عليه السلام, Allah says, I sent down upon you mahabba from me so that you are made with all attention, with all care from me. It comes with mawadda. This needs of us to go back to the root of mahabba and mawadda and see the difference between them. For example, we don't find of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-mahboob or al-muhab or any of these terms. We find Al-Wadud, the root of Mawadda is used and from it there's derivation with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Al-Wadud, while the root Hub does not give any name to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but the action of love is ascribed in the Quran al kareem or attributed, I would say, ascribed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in several verses, some of them like, Inna Allah yuhibbu alladheena yuqatiluna fi sabilihi saffa ka'annahum bunyanum marsus. Allah verily loves those who fight for his sake in one line. لا يحب الله الجهر بالسوء من القول إلا من ظلم. In another verse opposite, Allah does not like speaking evil aloud in public except those who have been oppressed. So Allah يحب لا يحب يحبهم ويحبونها. يا أيها الذين آمنوا من يرتد منكم عن دينه فسوف يأتي الله بقوم يحبهم ويحبونها. O ye who believe, if you turn against your deen, Allah will bring people يحبهم whom he loves ويحبونه and they love him. So the verb is ascribed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but there is no name of it given to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to love Allah more. Allah is loved in that way. قُلْ إِنْ كَانَ آبَاؤُكُمْ وَأَبْنَاؤُكُمْ وَإِخْوَانُكُمْ وَأَزْوَاجُكُمْ وَعَشِيرَتُكُمْ وَأَمْوَالٌ اِقْتَرَفْتُمُوهَا وَتِجَارَةٌ تَخْشَوْنَ كَسَادَهَا وَمَسَاكِنُ تَرْضَوْنَهَا أَحَبَّ إِلَيْكُمْ أَحَبَّ أَفْعَلْ تَفْضِيلٌ أَحَبَّ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَجِهَادٍ فِي سَبِيلِهِ Say if your fathers, your children, your brethren and so on, more beloved to you. So Allah is the beloved more than anyone else, but we don't have a name given to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from a doctrinal point of view, we cannot derive names to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ourselves according to what we find suitable. 
Asma'ullah Ta'ala Tawqifiyya. This is a very specific uh, theological term. Asma'ullah Ta'ala Tawqifiyya. Imam al Laqani says in Jawharat al Tawheed, Wahtira an Asma'hu Tawqifiyya. Kada al Sifatu Fahfadi al Sam'iyya. We have to rely on what we have been told in uh, Al-Qur'an or in As-Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Similarly, we have synonyms, but we can't uh, replace a word by another, even if they are similar in their meanings. For example, Alima and Arafa. Alima and Arafa, for us, they are synonyms. But we have in the Quran Kareem, Alima and Ya'lamu ascribed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is described with these two words, fi'l, madi and fi'l mudari'ah. We don't have arafa, ya'rifu. We can't say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, arafa or ya'rifu. From Alima, we have Alim. One of the 99 attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can't say alim. We can't describe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the word alim. Let alone arif. A few days ago I was in uh, Damascus listening to a speaker in a party. And the speaker said, Allahu la yasmahu bikatha. The word samaha, permit, is not a term which... Uh, can be given to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have a Quranic term which is synonym to it, adhina. Adhina, you can say Allah ya'than or adhina Allahu, but you can't say samaha. This is something that we have to stop in front of. We can't do ijtihad to say this is suitable to Allah, this is not suitable. We used the terms which have been given to us through Al-Quran and through As-Sunnah when describing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My reflection on uh, Mahabba and Mawadda has given me the following analysis of why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, not described with the name, for example, Mahbub. Although he is uh, Mahbub, beloved more than anything else, more than anyone else, because mahabba uh, for human beings is uh, measured by, uh, I would say, mahabba for human beings is something accidental. It comes and goes. It pops up, it disappears. It doesn't uh, have a certain criterion on which it could be permanent, it could change. While mawadda, from a linguistical point of view, is defined as al hubbu thabit, permanent love. We didn't define love itself. Love itself is defined meilu al-qalbi ila shay, inclination of the heart towards something. This is, I would say, the lowest levels of love. Mailu al qalbi ila shay. So, love is inclination of the heart. And this is the lowest level, the beginning of it. The heart inclines towards something. The highest level is fana'u al muhibbi fi al mahboob. The annihilation of the lover in the beloved. That is to say, the absence of mind, the absence of senses, the absence of one's choice in the choice of the beloved, in the senses of the beloved, in the existence of the beloved. This is what is called in human terms, craziness. People get crazy in love, so they have no choice of their own in terms of clothes or food. Sometimes they lose even uh, their senses. They don't observe what's hot, what's cold, what's harmful, what's uh, 
beneficial so they totally die to their own desire and own choice in the desire and choice and uh, witnessing the beloved however in terms of marriage the word love does not occur in this verse for great wisdom because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want people to meet and live for the rest of their lives either on false allegations that they love each other and pretensions or never meet how many people love each other truly and get married the percentage is very low and I say here truly if I ask how many people love each other and get married you'll say everyone if I say how many people truly love each other and get married you'll find very few because how many examples did we have of people who loved each other got married and got divorced if they truly loved each other they would never separate how many examples did we have of people who love each other when getting married all quarrels come around true love takes away all quarrels all the criticism all things uh, one partner does not like and the other this is why claiming true love is not uh, something simplistic people repeat the word in the English language it has become now coined in almost every other language I love you I love you and uh, it's uh, empty it's empty they don't know what it means I think they mean I admire you I like you it has become so cheap so empty now that it has no connotation of it I admire in you your beautiful eyes I admire in you your form I admire in you for example your beauty I admire in you your taqwa I like your ibadah I like your righteousness I like your ilm for example one thing you like but there are hundreds of things you don't like in the person when proposing to each other you try to forget the things that you don't like you try to overlook them in order to win the heart of your partner but when getting under one roof you're confronted now you admire you like or as you claim you love your partner for one reason but you dislike him for 999 reasons all of them now are revealed together under one roof let's see now whether this one reason can overcome the rest of all these reasons this is why there's no true love at all Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a great wisdom put these uh, two words this beautiful combination mawaddatan wa rahmah Mawadda is permanent love based on understanding and uh, reasoning. Mawadda is something that is based on legal rulings of the Sharia. Mawadda is something that develops through the mind, not through the heart. From a Sharia point of view, you're not required to love your partner when you meet before marriage during the proposal period you're not required to love each other at all and that would be impossible to achieve in most cases one out of a thousand or out of ten thousand or whatever you're required to develop love based on the good qualities you find in your partner this is why one of the Udaba put it in a beautiful way إذا كنت في كل الأمور معاتبا صديقك لم تلقى الذي لا تعاتبه فعش واحدا أوصل أخاك فإنه مقارف ذنب مرة ومجانبه ومن ذا الذي ترضى سجاياه كلها كفى المرأة نبلا أن تعد معايبه 
talking about friends. If you're going to blame your friend for every mistake he does, you're going to have no friends. Because there's no friend who is flawless. So live alone or forgive your friends their mistakes. Because sometimes he's going to do something good, other times he's going to do something bad. Tell me, the poet continues, is there anyone whose qualities are all praiseworthy? ومن ذا الذي ترضى سجاياه كلها؟ كفى المرأة نبلا أن تعد معايبه. It's enough as a sign of nobility that your deficiencies or flaws are counted. If I listen to a speaker and see one, two, three, four mistakes, I will praise him. Because having few mistakes is a sign of studies, that you studied so that your mistakes are less. The same also in behavior. If you sit and you sleep once in a class, it means that you're doing all efforts to restrain yourself. You're well behaved. You've been well taken care of. So I don't count your mistakes because there is a foundation of adab and there is every effort done to observe people's adab. كفى المرأة نبلا أن تعد معايبه. It's a, a sign of nobility that your mistakes, your errors are few, not so many. So who is going to find a perfect match, life partner? Perfection in uh, our minds does not lie outside in our modern times after the message of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. We have as close to perfection as possible, which is uh, relative perfection. Relativity in this context means that most perfect to you. So a person would be good and most perfect to one person, but not to the other. And here you understand why a girl would get married, for example, Nothing wrong with the girl, she's perfect, in perfect adab. She gets married to a young man, he's good, in perfect adab, then they get divorced. She remarries again, she finds a good husband, they get on well with each other. It's just what is perfect to you is not perfect to others. Usually we're going to probably ponder on this uh, issue later on to see what is uh, in common between people so that when they get married they find something in common so that they can come under one roof without much quarrels or much differences between them. So here is the point. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not want us to build our choice of partners when getting married on emotions or have our hearts playing this great role of love that I love this girl, I love this young man. The moment I saw him, I loved him. This is not what is required. What is required is understanding the qualities. This girl is uh, righteous, well raised up. Her character as described by her uh, girlfriends are good. This man has grown up as a righteous young man. His neighbors praised him and never witnessed anything wrong, major sin he committed since uh, they saw him when he was a little boy. Neighbors usually are the best people to ask when making inquiries about marriage. So this is good. So you build on, you make your decision that this girl is good. So I have to love this girl. I have to have this permanent love, mawadda. This is the difference between mawadda and, and here mahabba, I see brothers that there sisters. is a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam which uh, describes really what sparkles this uh, admiration between the couples. 
when Jabir ibn Abdullah or another Sahabi proposed to a girl, he came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam telling him, the Prophet said to him, Halla nazarta ilayha? You should have had a look at her. Unzur ilayha fa innahu ahra an yu'dama baynakuma. Look at her. It uh, would be better for you to come together, to combine each other. Where I would like to stop here is not the ruling of looking at each other, because this is mutual. Both have to look at each other. I mean by have here, wajibun wujub as sunan. It is sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You should understand in usul al-fiqh, the Prophet himself and the fuqaha use the word wajib, meaning sunnah. For example, غُسْلُ الْجُمْعَةِ وَاجِبٌ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ مُحْتَلِمٍ So don't criticize people if they say it's haram. Fuqaha sometimes say it's haram, they mean it's makruh, disliked. They say it's wajib, they mean it is sunnah. So here when we say they have to look at each other, we mean it is sunnah that they look at each other. أُنظُرْ إِلَيْهَا Upon the command of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم. أُنظُرْ إِلَيْهَا فَإِنَّهُ أَحْرَىٰ أَنْ يُؤْدَمَ بَيْنَكُمَا I remember I commented on this during the Shema'il course in the section of uh, food describing what the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam ate. There is something in Arabic called idam. Idam is anything you eat with bread. Any combination with bread. Translated as, I still remember, in the English translation of Shema'il as curry. Anything you eat with bread is called idam. Bread is not idam. Bread is bread, khubz. Anything else. The Prophet ﷺ praised in a hadith mutawatir, we had in al-shama'il, vinegar, and said, Ni'ma al-idamu al-khal. Ni'ma al-idamu al-khal. What a good combination vinegar would be with bread. Combination with bread. Although it's not mentioned, but idam is something you eat with bread. This is idam. So if you have bread in front of you, now can you tell me what's the best combination to choose from if you have a selection? So what's the best combination you eat with bread? Everyone has his own choice. Some will tell you cheese. Some will tell you no curry. Some will tell you olives. Some would say hummus. People vary. Bread and lettuce together is not a good combination. No, bread and cheese and lettuce, okay. But bread and lettuce alone is not a good combination. Although hungry people will eat anything. <laughs> and this is why It's good to have your uh, smiles in the beginning and have some humor. Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, had his fatwa in the beginning that women have to cover their faces only if they are attractive. I would translate the word fitna here by attraction because this is what it means, attraction from tract, tract attraction to others. So only if they are attractive, they have to cover their faces. Once he was walking in some of the streets of Baghdad and he saw an elderly man kissing an elderly woman. So he changed his opinion and said, Everything that falls will find someone to pick it up. No matter how ugly, how bad, how old it is. So hungry people will eat anything. لِكُلِّ سَاقِطَةٍ فِي الْحَيِّ لَاقِطَةٌ وَكُلُّ كَاسِدَةٍ يَوْمًا لَهَا سُوقُ كاسدة usually is goods that are not selling well. Goods, no one picks them up to buy, but they'll have their own, their own market one day. This is why, uh, brothers and sisters, when picking up our combinations of food, we have a taste. Our taste is different from other people's tastes. You have to eat what you like and dress what other people like. 
eat what you like, but you have to dress what people like. This is not part of Riyah, but part of uh, Zina for the believer. This is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alihi wa Sallam here talked about looking at each other. I'm sure that you've found yourself examples when some of your relatives got married and you met the girl, what did he find in her? There's nothing good in her. <laughs> or the same with girls. What did she find in him? Why? You didn't find a better man? Wait, you didn't pick up a better girl? Not a bad choice? No. For him, she is queen of beauty. For her, he is uh, Mr. Universe now, they're calling him. <laughs> <laughs> right? Miss Universe, Mr. Universe. <laughs> This is the attraction. Now bring me the best Indian food. I'm not sure whether I'm going to like it or not. I don't know. Hopefully if there's no curry in it, <laughs> I like it. It's just because of allergy to spices. I tried Chinese food, I didn't like it. I like Turkish food, for example. So it's a matter of taste. For you, you might not like Arab food or Moroccan food or Turkish food. This is the role of looking. Because we need you to get together as a best combination. This best combination, like a bread and meat, bread and cheese, bread with something. So that you get on well together by looking at each other. She likes you, you like her. There is nothing that keeps you away or aloof from her, no, 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 this is not my choice. It might be because of some criterion. You're looking for blue eyes, then you're uh, going not to get married at all. <laughs> Especially if you're looking for blue eyes and uh, black uh, hair, for example, together. Hardly you can find this criterion if you have sizes and so on. Inshallah, we're going to talk about this. Unfortunately, People put uh, beauty measurements and they want just to have a doll made for them to get married. Young people with these uh, attitudes will never get married and will never like any girl. and Their uh, looks will be thrown at other girls even after marriage because they're looking for beauty, looking to hunt beautiful eyes or a beautiful form or something like that. The same with girls also, it applies on them. So, انظر إليها فإنه أحرى أن يؤدم بينكما. Remember these words and this beautiful hadith. انظر إليها فإنه أحرى, أحرى better. There is every reason that you get on together. So By what? Going back to where we started, love is not required for marriage. And you don't have to tell your spouse, uh, your fiancé with one E and double E for male and female, you don't have to lie to your fiancé and tell her I love you. You don't have to lie to your fiancé and tell him I love you. And you don't find this love at all. Although it is halal to lie, there's nothing wrong in telling your husband you're the most handsome young man <laughs> on the face of the earth or telling your wife, you're the most beautiful young girl on the face of the earth. There's nothing wrong in doing these things from a Sharia point of view. It means in your eyes, in your eyes, you see her the most beautiful. But uh, I believe being actual, this is what they call waqiiya, actualism, being actual, down to earth, clear, black and white, uh, as much as possible, not very much helps a lot. Help me that I love you. Or I admire you, I like you. But uh, to go to that extreme that I love you and I see nothing else when I'm sitting with you, I'm totally absent from the whole world, you've taken my heart, you have control over my mind. And then when she comes to your pocket, to get some money, more than what you can afford. No, I can't give you. Where is love? No, you don't love her. You like her, you admire her, 
but you love money more. <laughs> the same also, I'm giving one example from one side to the other side. I have to make justice between girls and uh, boys, but uh, you draw the other examples. I don't have to make an example for every partner, for every situation. This is why I believe there is this ijaz in the Quran al-Kareem, وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً Allah put in you mawadda. I have seen people who got married and they don't love each other and they lived for 50 years with mawadda and rahma. Mawadda and rahma, respect, mercy, kindness. This is my wife. This is your ird. This is your afaf, chastity, protecting your chastity. The mother of your children, if there are any children, even without a children. This is uh, your life partner. This is a person who absorbs your anger in the morning, in the evening. This is the person with whom you share your bed. This is a person who knows your secrets. This is a person who knows your deficiencies, uh, all what you need to hide from other people. This is the person who has access to you, you have access to him. Also, unrestricted, uh, not like other mahrams or other uh, friends. This means there's some level of love, respect, mutual understanding, uh, mercy, coexistence, harmony should develop. If you invite me to your home and I eat with you, have some of your food, you have a right upon me until the end of time that I should respect you. I should defend you. If I sit somewhere and someone slanders you, whether true or untrue, I have eaten food in your home. I was your guest once. I can't keep silent. I have to defend you. I have to stand for you there. I won't accept anyone speaking ill of you because I تحرمتو بطعامك. Eating your food is like a sanctuary. You have become so close to me by inviting me and I ate your food. This is one example of the rights people have upon each other. One of the Udaba says, Suhbatu yawmin nasabun qareebu wa dhimmatun yahfazuha al-labibu. Suhbatu yawmin, the company of one day. Now you brothers here are spending, sisters the same, spending three days together. Suhbatu yawmin, Company with each other for one day, nasabun qaribu, is a close lineage, is another lineage. This is an extra lineage. Wa dhimmatun, it's an allegiance, yahfazuha al-labibu, only people of wisdom will guard this lineage or this allegiance. Just because of coming together for one day, traveling together. Inna Allah yas'alu an suhbati sa'a. In one hadith of the Prophet وسلم, Allah asks people for the rights they have upon each other for the company of one hour. One hour means any bit of time, considerable bit of time. Not 60 minutes necessarily, 10 minutes would be a considerable amount of time. The company of each other brings rights upon each other. Now you've got married. I believe it's not by time, just by the rights and uh, the obligations you've got upon each other after the marriage contract and the access you had to each other because of the Sharia and the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alihi Wasallam. You should protect each other. You should bear up with each other. I've seen people who lived for so many years and develop some respect towards each other. They knew what they like, what they don't like, what provokes anger, what uh, causes quarrels, they avoid. Everyone gives or makes some concessions. Life doesn't go on well as you like. You know how it goes on? It goes on as Allah likes. Not as I like or you like. This is why Wise people usually, they wake up in the morning looking at what they're going to do, right? Wise people, usually they plan. 
They get up in the morning looking at what they're going to do. But no sticks. By wise people, I mean al-aqil. By no sticks, I mean al-arif. They get up in the morning looking at what Allah is going to do to them. Huge difference. We're not talking about a jahil who gets up in the morning not knowing what to do and what's done to him. Aqil, <laughs> wise people, they get up in the morning, they have certain plans for their day, for their life, for the month, for the year, and so on. Wise people. Al-aqilu, إذا أصبح ينظر ماذا يفعل. والعارف إذا أصبح ينظر ماذا يفعل الله به. A wise man gets up in the morning looking at what he is going to do. While a man of Allah gets up in the morning looking at what Allah is going to do to him. Receiving from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all his decrees. So you have to live with each other. You have to bear up with each other. You have to find all reasons for love. One beautiful line of poetry speaks about uh, deficiencies and praiseworthy qualities. Every one of us has them. But the poet put it in a beautiful way. He says, وَعَيْنُ الرِّضَى عَنْ كُلِّ عَيْبٍ كَلِيلَةٌ كَمَا أَنَّ عَيْنَ السُّخْطِ تُبْدِي الْمَسَاوِيَةٌ وَعَيْنُ الرِّضَى Looking at you. When I look at you, either I like you or I don't like you. If I like you, I'll find every praiseworthy quality in you. If I don't like you, I'll find every error in you and pick up on it and highlight it. How we look at each other. You can see it, for example, when people praise politicians. There's nothing good in some of these politicians and they find all qualities and they praise them. And sometimes you get to saints, you get to ulama, you get and you start criticizing them. There's everything good in them, but you don't see it. Hijab, there is hijab. And there's another subject, Imam Ibn Atta'illah secondary speaks about in Al-Hikam, why people are veiled from witnessing the special ranks of the awliya, others are not. Wa'ainu al-rida. If you like your wife, if you're happy, you can pick up on the good qualities. Otherwise, the moment you start getting angry, you pick up on the worst qualities. The Prophet explained to us, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, in sa'aka minha khuluq, sarraka minha khuluq. Don't get angry at your wife because you don't like something she does, because there are other things which she does and you like. So remember them. See here the importance of mawadda. Here we comes, and I would like to end with this, inshallah, to the various methods of getting married. I very much like and would like our societies to stick to the traditional way. The traditional way of getting married means that you investigate, you send your family members, your mother, your khala, your amma, your sisters, uh, people who are trained, experienced. They know you well, number one. They know what you like. So they save you a lot of time, a lot of trouble. You don't have to go and visit 20 houses to meet 20 girls. They already decide. They pick up first on certain criteria. Some families, they see 10 girls, they cross on eight, they see, go and see this number one, this is number two for example, because they know you very well. They are the best people. They know your character, angry or not. They know your patience. They know your uh, choices uh, of everything, dunya and women and food. And so these people go and also they have some wisdom. When they go and visit the family, they look at the upbringing. They look at the behavior. I'm sure you have a lot of nice stories you've been told by your grandparents how they proposed uh, to your father, to your mother, or accepted the proposals, or how things were done. They have a lot of uh, old-fashioned uh, or old-styled uh, criterion which they used. 
I'm not talking about beauty, but looking at the behavior, looking at the adab of the girl. The same happens also with the man. Now, when the man wants to propose, he goes, or his family, he goes to see the girl, and then they observe him also, the father, the uncle, the cousin, the grandfather, they observe him. All you need so that wise people can judge you is to open your mouth and speak few words, and people will judge you. People will look at your behavior, at your moves, at your looks. And this is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam put this look with no more than looking at the hands and the face. All features of a woman's beauty and a man's beauty are represented in their faces. The rest is indicated by the behavior. Akhlaq. I could know your patience from sitting, for example. How often do you change your posture? It's an indication of your patience. Whether you're persistent or not in your study, in your business, if you start a business project, you're going to change or get bored, tired. By your looks, you look. You want something new every minute. Every second you want something new. No, one look, stable. This is firasa. And this firasa is not built on reading the unseen. Is analyzing the seen to get from it the unseen. It's bab talazum in logic called bab talazum. Something is an indication of something. You see smoke, you judge there's fire behind the wall because of the smoke. Unfortunately, there is no wisdom amongst young people now because you don't accompany elders. You don't learn from them. Modern societies turn young people against their parents and grandparents. You pick up this wisdom not only from the ulama. The ulama are the major source for that, but much from elderly people in your community, in your family, in your tribe, and so on. So you can get a lot of information. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave people also some time. Now, when the man proposes, it's now the role of the girl's family to go and investigate and ask about the young boy. They'll ask his neighbors, his friends, friends of his parents, and people are required here to, to tell the truth. And there's no lie, there's no backbiting, there's no slander in telling the truth. Sometimes you can make general statements. No, don't. You'll find better than this young man. A general statement. Sometimes you have to give a specific answer. Sometimes you get uh, specific defects which you're happy with. He's extravagant. He gets angry. Everything is good or right with him, just he gets angry. So you have to ask the family of the young man already asked before going to visit. Or after seeing the girl and finding the girl suitable, then they asked and proposed. This is traditionally done in the Islamic world for 14 centuries. Unfortunately, this has been destroyed. This is a great legacy. This is a great legacy. And in this legacy here, you see the beauty of the words of the Prophet, Unzur ilayha. With all the opinions of your mother, aunts, and family members, now go and look at her. The same with her also. They described him to her, but still, they met, they looked at each other, they find this uh, acceptance, admiration sometimes, fascination, impression sometimes, they get impressed by each other. So they go on and continue. Unfortunately, brothers and sisters, you have destroyed, not you, modern societies, modern cultures, and you're not helping much, destroyed this traditional way. Now, young girls are looking at colleges and universities, at the faces of young boys, trying to smile at someone, to pick up someone. Worse than this, young boys are looking at the faces of girls. I'm talking about righteous people who don't do anything haram. They just scan faces 
I would like this girl, okay, but not this girl. Face like this, not like this. Body like this, not like this. This is haram all. This is all haram. This is why when people are proposing to a girl, they never like anyone. Because after looking at all these faces in colleges, universities, they try to form an idealistic figure. It's like asking a young boy to draw an imaginary animal, superstitious animal that does not exist. What does uh, a boy do usually? Gets uh, zeroff neck, polar bear, body, face of a lion, two wings of uh, an eagle, makes such a combination all together. So you're making a combination in your mind of an idealistic girl by picking up the eyes of this girl, so and so and so, the body of this girl, the face of this girl, the skin color of this girl, the voice of this girl, and so on. And the same with girls also, they do the same when picking up a young man. They end up not accepting, not finding at all. If they find, they make concessions, then these concessions are always brought up after marriage. I got married to you, you are not my best choice. <laughs> Does anyone say like something like that? Yes. No, 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 no. No one says something like that <laughs> to anyone. But it's a talk in the heart, which pushes him to bearing up. The moment you start bearing up, you're not enjoying your marriage, your marital life. This is the point. These talks are in the heart. I wish I found someone better. But okay, I have to get married, there's no one better. Okay, I will accept this girl. What life are you going to have because of being forced or not finding better? Or This is not a way to get married, brothers and sisters, in colleges. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us, And again, Lower your gaze, don't look around. Not because of the fitna of haram, falling in haram at alone, no. You're making it very difficult for yourself to get married. And you're spoiling, you're marrying your marital life in the future. If we don't talk about the role of TV now, and people watching TV, and everyone wants a model like in, in TV. In Damascus, uh, 15 years ago, there was... Uh, really a radical change when they uh, presented in uh, Syrian TVs these, some of these Mexican uh, series. And it was for the first time something with uh, that indecency level presented in Syrian TV. Now there's much worse, unfortunately. It was very difficult for people to get married. At that time, I was told the time of the episode, the streets of Damascus were empty. Young people all sitting at home watching the uh, episode. It made it very difficult for people to get married later on. And several people got married again. They were married, they got married again. And I praise these people because they didn't opt for haram. But maybe they don't have enough income, maybe they don't have enough facilities to establish justice. They got married again because their families picked up for them their girl, not according to their own uh, style or choice. Now they have found a different standard on TV, so they wanted the TV model. Brothers, sisters, what we need to have in our marital life is this understanding, this harmony, which is based not on the skin color or on the color of the eyes, or the size and the form and so on, it's based on wisdom. How much wisdom you have, how much akhlaq you have, and how much in common you have. Alhamdulillah, you are all righteous people, so you would be looking for righteous people. But righteousness alone is not enough, as there is righteousness, deen and amana, deen and khuluq, both together. Khuluq here means wisdom also is part of that. So okay, this is my wife. I protect her, I defend her. I will live with her, I will make her happy, I will give her every, everything I'm capable of providing. Although I don't like her, although she doesn't listen to me all the time, 
although it's not my first choice, although so and so, but there is a lot of good in her, it's enough that she is patient with you. That should be enough. Believe me, if we mean women and sisters now try not to listen, because I don't want to provoke uh, sisters against uh, men or uh, make them greedy or arrogant. But believe me, any person who stands up our bad behavior should be wali. Look at yourself. Any person who is patient with you, putting in front of you three meals a day, picking up your choice of food, bringing the food to you every day, things which they don't have to do. From a Sharia point of view, legally speaking, they don't have to. But Alhamdulillah, sisters are so good nowadays, Alhamdulillah, they still continue the tradition. They don't ask you for a helper, in a beautiful word. They don't ask you for a helper. Your wife brings food to you, bears up your character. She uh, sees everything bad in you and she stitches her mouth. She goes out, whether out of love for you or out of uh, pride, she says, my husband is the best, always. These people should be awliya. Any person who can bear up with our bad behavior is a wali. Because we represent all contradictions. If we are to analyze our behavior, our character, we will uh, be the worst people by the end. Imam Ahmad Zarruq in Qawa'id al-Tasawwuf says that there is a good quality everyone must have. Awareness of your faults. Although it is difficult to change all your bad character or traits into good ones, if we may say logically or adi, I would say adi, from a Sharia point of view, it's impossible to have a perfect man after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this imperfection would be shown in one way or another. So Imam Shaykh Ahmad Zarruq says in Qawaid al tasawwuf being aware of our faults, our bad behavior, our deficiencies, is not to correct them all because that's impossible, but to humiliate us and humble ourselves in front of people. Being aware of what we are, how ignorant we are, we make lies, we backbite, we don't pray on time, we are arrogant, we have hypocrisy, and so on. Being aware of that in our hearts makes us appreciate other people, makes us humble ourselves in front of other people. And that's the key point in the success of marital life with each other. When you get on with each other, you're not the best person on the face of the earth and your wife is not the worst. You have to believe that she's better than you and you're the worst of all mankind. And praise be to Allah, thanks to her that she's bearing up with you. Every new day, you should be thankful to Allah in the morning that Alhamdulillah, she's still living with me. It's a great bounty from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same applies on you, sisters. The same applies on you. I'm just taking the opportunity to take revenge for you from brothers. <laughs> so this is the start, inshallah, an introduction to help us uh, sailing in uh, this book, Kitab nikah It's uh, food break, inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Barakallahu fikum.